One of the interesting challenges of playing this piece, plain and simple, is how to begin it. It's starting with a quotation from Bach. That gives you part of an answer. It's in a beautiful part of the cello, a nice, warm, rich. What does it say there? It says, espressivo, piano, legato, allegro, non troppo. The thing that is really interesting is if you look at the page, and if we have the score, you can look at it with me. It starts out, I'm going to exaggerate what it says. It says, just as, they, as you look at them, it's not, it's not written legato with a slur. It's written with separate notes but he puts the word legato. So I think there was a time in my life where I really wanted to show the counterpoint, so I played it. Making it kind of very Bachy, very Baroque. And more recently I thought, well, yes, but he did write the word legato. So a solution to that is not to take your bow off, but to leave it on. but with the different bow strokes, as he said, which they are not slurred. And then finally you have a And then another kind, he has three notes with a dot underneath the slur, that I think we call portato. So that's the first thing I would say. What do you do about the Boeings? Well, I'm going to make a general statement and then we'll come back to it in other parts of the piece. Maybe other than Clara Schumann, the most important musician in Brahms's life was the great violinist Joseph Joachim. And I know from reading everything that whenever Brahms wrote a piece of chamber music or anything involving violin, he turned to Joachim for advice about that instrument. Brahms was a pianist. And I would say that as he went along, um, Brahms developed all kinds of wonderful knowledge and interest about how string instruments work. So this time around when I was working on preparing it for this recording, I began to take very seriously where the slurs are and did my best to acknowledge, at least in my opinion, that Brahms wrote them not only as musical expressive marks, but that as Boeings because he would have had the perfect, the greatest violinist of his time, Joseph Joachim, was somebody who would play it for him and try it for him. One of the things we have from that friendship is that he wrote his violin concerto for Joachim, who played the first performance of it, and that the manuscript of it later on came to the Library of Congress. And that manuscript is really interesting because it has markings in it in different colors that show some of the things. And we also know that in some cases, uh, Brahms asked Joachim for his opinions and he didn't like the answers, so he kept with what he believed. So I think that Brahms, when he writes a slur mark, means it. And so my first thing to say about that is as you go through the whole piece, really try hard to do those things as Boeings. I will tell you that as I've done that, I've added more of his original Boeings than I used to do. I've changed myself that way. And that there are a few places where I still think as a practical matter, I need to break the bows. There is, by the way, a wonderful quotation from Brahms 
talking to a performer. He says, do it however you want. Just be sure it's beautiful.